Hi everyone. Today we will look at portfolio risk concepts using VAR or value at risk. Uh, I have in front of me here a spreadsheet outlining um, a hypothetical example of a portfolio uh, with $5,000 invested. Uh, it's comprised of two assets, asset A and asset B. Uh, $2,000 and $3,000 invested in each asset respectively. So uh, there are a bunch of calculations on the spreadsheet, but we will focus on definitions and interpretation and usage of uh, some of these portfolio risk concepts, uh, namely individual VAR, diversified VAR, undiversified VAR, marginal VAR, component VAR, and incremental VAR. So there's uh, quite a few definitions and um names here so bear with me uh and don't worry about the ca calculations too much because the focus is on uh the interpretation and definition first let's remind ourselves what is var so in this case we have a 95 percent confidence level for a var so for example asset a which has two thousand dollars uh invested in it uh, the VAR of asset A is $197, meaning that we are 95% sure that we will not lose $197 over the next one day if we invest $2,000 in asset A. Similarly, uh, $3,000 uh, of asset B have a VAR of $690. So our maximum loss over the next one day is $690 at 95% confidence. Uh, so an alternative way of interpreting it is that there is a 5% chance of losing more than $690 over the next one day if we invest $3,000 in asset B. Now, the beauty of VAR is that uh, it does take correlations uh, into account if there is not a perfect linear correlation between asset A and asset B, uh, the diversification benefit will be captured in the portfolio VAR. So here's the difference between diversified and undiversified VAR. Undiversified VAR is just the sum of individual VAR. So if we had a VAR of asset A of $197, and VAR of asset B of $690. If we just added these two numbers together, we would get $888. That's the undiversified VAR, or VAR of the portfolio, assuming perfect linear correlation uh, between the two assets. In this case, we have a non-perfect linear correlation. So we assume a correlation coefficient of 0.5. So we know that the total risk of the portfolio will be lower than the sum of the individual risks of uh, of individual assets uh, within the portfolio. So our diversified VAR, also known as the portfolio VAR, is $807. So there's a diversification benefit of about $80 from the fact that uh, correlation coefficient is 0 0.5. So what if that correlation coefficient was a perfect one? our diversified VAR and undiversified VAR would be the same. Uh, what if that correlation coefficient was zero? If they were not correlated at all, you see that correlation, that diversified VAR goes even lower. So the diversification benefit is larger. So let me change it back to 0 0.5 uh, and continue with these definitions. Now, let me define marginal VAR. Marginal VAR is the increase in the portfolio VAR for a dollar increase in the investment in this particular asset. Uh, the 0 0.07 means that if we invest an additional dollar in asset A, our total portfolio VAR will increase by seven cents approximately. The 23 cents for asset B means that if we invest an additional dollar in asset B, our portfolio VAR will go up by 23 cents. That means that portfolio B or asset B 
is more risky or it will contribute more risk to the portfolio uh, because uh, in part because uh, the variance of that asset B is higher. The overall VAR is that asset B is higher. The marginal VAR is therefore also uh, higher for asset B than uh, that for asset A. Uh, it works in the other direction as well. What if we reduce our position in asset B by a dollar? So our, uh, our portfolio VAR will be reduced by approximately 23 cents. So that's what it means. Marginal VAR is the first derivative, first partial derivative uh, of uh, the portfolio VAR with respect to each particular uh, component asset. What is component VAR? Component VAR, uh, if you notice that they add up, so component VAR numbers for all assets add up to the total diversified VAR of the overall portfolio. So there are a couple of ways of, of thinking about it. Uh, one definition is that what would happen to your portfolio VAR if you reduced or if you removed the entire asset A from this portfolio? If we removed asset A from the portfolio, portfolio VAR would be reduced by $132. If we removed the entire asset B, from this portfolio. The portfolio VAR would be reduced by $675. The alternative way of interpreting it is how much, or thinking about it, is how much does each asset contribute to the overall VAR of the portfolio? So if we know that $807 is our overall VAR of the portfolio, where does that come from? So $132 of that is coming from our investment in asset A. And the other $675 of that diversified VAR comes from the investment in asset B. That is component VAR. Uh, what is incremental VAR? Incremental VAR is the increase or change in VAR if we increase the position in asset B by a certain amount. So in this case, if we added $100 into asset B, our overall portfolio VAR would be increased by $22.52. That is the interpretation. The difference between incremental VAR and marginal VAR is that marginal VAR is given per unit or per dollar or per unit of currency. Uh, change. Incremental VAR could be recalculated for larger changes. Uh, the, the beauty of or the advantage of incremental VAR over marginal VAR is that it, it is more precise for larger changes, for large additions and uh, uh, deductions uh, from individual assets. But the disadvantage of in incremental VAR is that for it to be accurate, uh, you will need to conduct a full revaluation uh, of the portfolio with the new trade. Uh, so it will require more effort, more money, and more time. Uh, but that is the in uh, interpretation of incremental VAR. Now let's take a look at uh, the approximation to the incremental VAR. So you see I have two different ways to, uh, to calculate incremental VAR. Uh, one uh, is uh, derived from this table right here. So if we increase asset A, asset B, I'm sorry, by $100, uh, we're conducting a full revaluation. We're recalculating the weight of each of those assets. We're recalculating the variance given the correlation coefficient. And then we're recalculating the new portfolio VAR with that new addition. So the new portfolio VAR is $830, uh, whereas the starting VAR was $807. So the difference between the two is $22.52. Uh, this required full revaluation. Uh, the $22.52 is the incremental VAR of a trade of $100 uh, addition of asset B. The approximation of uh, this incremental VAR uh, is what it is. It's 
it's it's an approximation of the change in portfolio var using the marginal var so we know that for every dollar invested in asset b our portfolio var will go up by 23 cents and that approximation is based on the linear uh, uh, first partial derivative of of the function uh, so we know that it, it it works pretty well for small changes but it doesn't work well for large changes so a hundred dollars it's uh is uh, not a very small trade but it's not a uh, uh, big trade either uh, so we're using this approximation we're doing a hundred dollars times the 23 cents and we're getting an approximated value of $22.51, which is very, very close to the full revaluation version of $22.52 that we got earlier. How can we use these concepts in portfolio management? So uh, looking at marginal VAR, we already know that an extra dollar invested in asset A uh, will contribute less to the portfolio VAR so if we were to choose which asset to reduce and which asset to increase uh, if our goal was to reduce the overall risk we would be uh, selecting to reduce asset b and we'll uh, be selecting to add money to asset a uh, this way we would be minimizing uh, our portfolio var uh, and as we move money from asset B to asset A, marginal VAR also moves. And once they are equal to each other, uh, that is the point of minimal VAR, uh, the, the minimum point of portfolio VAR. Of course, in real life, there's also another factor uh, when deciding which asset to add to or which asset to re uh, remove from, uh, which is the expected return of the asset. So risk is only one of the factors uh, that's relevant to decision making. So, uh, but uh, it's nevertheless very useful. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, a hypothetical example, which is a little bit more realistic. Uh, hopefully it, it will allow you to visualize uh, the decision making process by senior management a little bit better. So consider a hypothetical bank uh, that has uh, four desks, equities desk, credit desk, commodities desk, rates desk. Each desk is run uh, individually by, by traders and each desk produces of course uh its own risk profile so the equities desk has an individual var of a hundred thousand dollars credit desk and commodities desk and rates desk all have the same exact var meaning that if you look at the commodities desk by itself the maximum loss over the next one day at the 95 percent confidence level is a hundred thousand dollars so you're expecting that this desk will not lose more than $100,000 the next day. Each one of these desks has the same exact risk based on standalone or individual VAR. Now, component VAR, or let's take a look at the total portfolio VAR. Total portfolio VAR is 220,000. It's less than the sum of individual VARs meaning that there is non-perfect correlation amongst these desks. So the diversification benefit is there. Our total portfolio VAR is smaller than the sum of individual VARs. What are these component VARs? We know, we see that they're different for each desk. Component VAR, as a reminder, is uh, how much would the overall portfolio VAR change by? if you dropped uh, this entire asset from the portfolio. So if we remove the entire equities desk from uh, this whole portfolio, if equities desk stopped trading and closed all their positions, the individual VAR is $100,000, but the overall portfolio VAR would be reduced by $90,000 as opposed to rates. If you removed rates, from this portfolio. Overall VAR would be 
uh, reduced by $70,000. The other alternative uh, way to looking at component VAR is how much of the $220,000 overall portfolio of VAR comes from each asset or from each desk in this case. So what's notable is that one of these component VARs is negative. So let's take a look at what that could possibly mean. So a commodities desk has a negative component VAR. That means that commodities desk is most likely negatively correlated with the other three desks. So it's it's uh, producing or contributing a very good diversification benefit. So if we remove the commodities desk from this portfolio, even though the individual VAR of that commodities desk is $100,000, our overall VAR of the portfolio would actually go up. So if commodities desk was instructed to stop trading because this individual VAR was too high or something, our overall firm VAR would go up from $220,000 to $240,000. So it's it would be a bad idea uh, if your goal was to, re to reduce overall risk, it would be a bad idea to uh, instruct the commodities desk to stop trading. Uh, equities desk contributes much more to this overall portfolio relative to the commodities desk because uh, it's more uh, positively correlated with the rest of the bank than the commodities desk is. These concepts are very common and they're very useful uh, in portfolio management and by senior management. Uh, and it provides another way and another tool uh, to make investment decisions uh, when it comes to portfolio management. Uh, one additional note uh, I will mention is that these definitions uh, are only one set of possible definitions. So in the industry, there is not a unified uh, set of definitions. Uh, in academics, there is, but in the industry, uh, some banks may use a marginal VAR to denote what we call the component VAR in this video. Uh, it doesn't mean that one of us is wrong. It just means that uh, whatever the notation and uh, the definition that everybody chooses to use, uh, that ends up uh, being in the lingo. And uh, what's more important is how you interpret these numbers and how you use them. Uh, so hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day or night.